Alright, so this is a suggestion via Discord. The name of the video is The Crazy Engineering of Venice. Uh, this is coming from the channel Primal Space. Alright, let's go and jump into this immediately. I'm here for it. The year is 452. The Roman Empire is on the brink of collapse, and the Huns have just launched their attack on northern Italy. Several cities are completely destroyed, forcing the locals to go on the run. They head for a lagoon just off the coast and take refuge on several small islands, a decision that would no doubt save their lives. Against all odds, this small civilization eventually went on to build one of the most impressive feats of engineering the world has ever seen, Venice. Despite having no roads, no land, and no fresh water, the Venetians managed to turn a muddy swamp into the most powerful and wealthiest city of its time. Absolutely. This unique it definitely attracted a lot of people at that time. Swamp into the most powerful and wealthiest city of its time. This unique layout people, of canals and things. bridges woven through hundreds of islands made Venice incredibly accessible, and it became the epicenter of all business. We modeled the entire thing to show you what's going on beneath the surface and how its clever design and medieval engineering allowed it to take over the world. And when the first standing. refugees arrived to start their new lives on the islands, they had the worst possible surface to build on. The small marshy islands were made of an incredibly soft clay, which would barely hold the weight of a human, let alone an entire city. To create stable foundations for buildings, the Venetians collected large timber piles from the forests of Croatia and started hammering them into the ground. They drove them about five meters deep until they reached a much harder layer of clay. Guys, another interesting thing about this, if you saw how um, the illustrator here um, showed at least how they put the wood into the ground, is I'm almost positive it didn't happen like that. Almost positive, at least. Uh, to my knowledge, it was dragged underneath the water behind the boats. Uh, and this was exclusively done, okay, for one purpose. Uh, so the wood itself would have less oxygen, uh, meaning it would last longer. They wouldn't have to actually replace it, right? There would be no chance of it rotting uh, if you drag it under the water for a long enough period of time to let the oxygen escape and then put the actual pikes uh, uh, directly into the, the marshy ground. Um, to my knowledge, that's how I recall it, at least. I wasn't there, right? But that's what I recall from, from history books, at least. But either way, um, no complaints. Not only did this stabilize the piles, but by packing them really close together, it compressed the surrounding clay, pushing out the water and making it much stronger. Once the piles were firmly in the ground, the tops were cut off and wooden planks were laid on top to spread the it load. Genius. Special blocks of Istrian stone were then placed to raise the foundations above the water. This design was a stroke of genius, yeah, as the wooden piles were sealed away from the air, making it impossible for them to rot. Mm -hmm. To this day, almost all of the original piles are in great condition and are still holding up the city. Once the foundation had been properly laid down, the buildings themselves were built. Venetians started off using wood for their houses, but and after last... numerous fires, they switched to brick. To keep the buildings as lightweight as possible, they had to be no more than three stories high. Lime mortar had to be used instead of cement because it was flexible and would allow the entire building to flex as the ground beneath slowly moved. Guys, not so drastically, but yeah. The inner walls were built in a crisscross pattern that would also flex like a trellis. The facade walls, which had large windows and elegant stone designs, made them much heavier. And so in order to stop them from falling over, they were pinned into the floor using iron rods, keeping the entire building together. This method of building worked well for the Venetians, and soon several islands around the lagoon were established in this way. Instead of expanding outwards like most cities, these islands expanded into Together. each other. Yeah. At first, boats were the only way to cross between the islands. But eventually the islands grew closer together, and many could be crossed by simply wading through the shallow water on a horse. Yeah, a couple of streets are still kind of like that, but I wouldn't do that if I were you. The next step in Venice's evolution would of course be connecting the islands. Surprisingly, there were no bridges for the first 500 years of Venice's existence. But as the population increased that, yeah. and business started to ramp up, there needed to be an easier way to reach Rialto, the financial center of Venice. 
And so, the Doge of Venice set up a prize for the engineer that could design the best bridge. He announced this by putting up display posters all around the city. Just about? kidding. Display. Oh, <laughs> what, what, what is display? All right, really quickly. Um, we're, it looks like we're about to gloss over Oreo. Oreo was incredibly important. Incredibly, incredibly important to history, specifically Venetian history, um, specifically Italian history. Uh, so, Vene um, not Venetian. Well, yeah, Venetia, but either way. So Oreo, um, historically, is going to have like a couple of spellings in his name. Uh, you, have the, you have this spelling of his first name, and then you have A-U-R-I-O, right? Uh, I think that it was probably A-U-R-I-O, and we just say it like that. I'm almost positive, but either way, don't shoot the messenger here. Um, so he was the ambassador uh, to Sicily in, I think, 1175. Um he didn't live very long, guys. Well, I don't think many people lived that long, at least at that time. Um, but like, as soon as he left office, I think it was 1192 or so, uh, or 1190, somewhere, somewhere in there, guys, he, he, lived, he basically lived for one month after he left office. Um, a historical footnote of his would probably be uh, he tried to get into some type of battle, right? And the Pope yelled at him and was like, bro, you cannot uh, use soldiers for that purpose. No, no, no. You only have to use them for my purpose, basically. Uh, if you're going to delete people, you have to delete them for my purposes. The Pope said that. Pope Gregory at the time, at least. But I'm, I'm paraphrasing. But either way. Um, and so, uh, yeah, the Third Crusade started. That was it. That was basically why he couldn't use anything. And I think that's probably one of the, the only real historical footnotes he has, other than um, him looking for people to uh, build the Rialto Bridge or Ponte di Rialto. Set up a prize for the engineer that could design the best bridge. He announced this by putting up display posters all around the city. Just kidding. Displate, today's sponsor, makes awesome metal posters that can be easily mounted using their custom magnet mounting system. They have over 2 million pieces of artwork available, whether it's a beautiful Venice painting or an official poster from collaborators like NASA, Star Wars, Call of Duty, or Netflix. My personal favorites are this Venice poster and this awesome James Webb design. With their magnet mounting system, you can mount a display in just 20 seconds, without power tools and without damaging your walls. Displate now offers these new texture posters. Uh, Kepler 16B. Oh, uh, I've seen someone with this exact poster. I was wondering. Uh, listen, I love me some of the Keplers, guys. Right, check, check them out. Which bring the artwork to life with awesome 3D textures I don't shaped look into the, the metal itself. But. This premium finish is already available mm. on hundreds of top selling displates. Displate offers ultra fast shipping, and your bro. metal poster should be at your yeah, door bro, yeah, in bro. just. Okay, bro, here, I'm going to the code. That's the code, guys. If you guys want to want to utilize it, go for it. As of right now, I do think that this is a an extremely informative video. I think historically, it's very accurate. Also, uh, I like it. Right, I respect videos like this. We're learning something today, instead of just you know spewing hatred. Let's say. But anyway, let's let's uh, jump into it. In order to turn Venice from a collection of islands into a bustling city, bridges had to be built. The first attempt was a simple pontoon bridge that joined the two largest sections of Venice together. And that, was, that wasn't an attempt, though. They, they knew that this wasn't going to last. This was there until they could build a stone bridge. was a simple pontoon bridge that joined the two largest sections of Venice together and, crucially, provided quick access to the Rialto area. The bridge was later upgraded to a wooden bridge, which eventually burned down and collapsed before it was finally replaced by a much stronger stone bridge. To build it, over 12,000 timber piles were driven into the banks of the canal, <laughs> and 10,000 tons of stone were built on top to form the bridge. Yeah, guys, we just, we just like teleported a couple hundred years into the future. Um, but let's go ahead and break some of this down. He said the bridge burnt down. He kind of glossed over it, guys. I think Taipolo did that. Um, I think 1300s or so, early 1300s, Taipolo during the revolution. Uh, it also burnt down again during the riots. Uh, they shot cannons. No, 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 no. The wooden one was burnt down by Taipolo. Uh, this one here had cannons shot at it during the riots in uh, the late 1700s, guys. Uh, also, Michelangelo uh, tried to build this, actually. Uh, he submitted a couple of designs to build the Ponte di uh, Rialto, guys. He tried to. Uh, I think it was 1500s or so. 
Um, the bridge also collapsed again, guys, right? Uh, there's just been so much like strife with this bridge. It's crazy. Um, but they end up, uh, they ended up basically choosing, uh, through some type of nepotism because the, the nephew was an architect or the architect, a famous architect had a nephew. Uh, he, you know, his last name was bridge. So they basically was like, you know what? The, the guy whose last name is bridge, Antonio Ponte, go ahead and build this bridge. Right. So it's funny because the name of the bridge is again, Ponte D, uh, Rialto, right? Um, and the builder, the architect who built this structure that has lasted until today, and if guys, it, it's still you know very nice looking, guys. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that bridge. Um, yeah, Antonio Ponte, he, he, his name just so happens to be Bridge, basically, guys. But anyway, to this day, the bridge still stands, and it serves as the main artery in the center of Venice. After this, stone bridges started to pop up everywhere, turning Venice into a compact city made up entirely of canals instead of roads. Yeah, this gave Venice a unique advantage, since the canals structure. allowed goods and traffic to flow quickly through every part of the city. The messy overlap of pedestrians and horse-drawn traffic didn't exist in Venice, since the walkways and canals were completely separated. Yet people could transition between the two effortlessly without slowing down. By now, the city had become the most powerful and richest city in Europe. Everything being bought and sold went through Venice, and the Venetians were making enormous amounts of money. But as business increased, so did the population, and the demand for Ugh. fresh water was out of control. And it's the problem. Another problem with Venice is, guys, um, um, they really don't like tourists. I get it. I Listen, I get it. I respect it. Okay. You don't have to like it. You shouldn't. Well, you don't have to like it. Okay. Um, you know, guys, I lived half the year in, in Spain, right? So like I, I can, I definitely know when summertime hits, uh, the tourists come and things just get a little unfortunate. I don't like it. Just keep me away from any, anywhere tourists. I get it. I get it people. Right. But the, it's the cruise ships. Ask a Venetian about these cruise ships. And they're going to, I'm telling you, they, they don't want you there, bro. They don't want these cruise ships. They don't want high levels of tourists um, because all you're really doing is polluting the water, guys. These, this is their town. <laughs> okay, this is like this is their town. Everything that they eat basically comes from the water around their town, and now you're bringing, you know, gigantic, literally gigantic cities on water uh, to this tiny city, bro. Relax a little bit. I get it. I, I understand it from, from the Venetian's point of view, guys, because I can only tell you what Malaga, Spain looks like during the summer, bro. Ugh. Despite <laughs> when, when, when all the tour, when all the, the, the ridiculous uh, cruise ships come in, and you're just like, bro, you're blocking my view of the ocean. Being surrounded by water, Venice couldn't use any of it since it was extremely salty and undrinkable. Without natural springs or rivers to collect fresh water, Venice relied upon boats to deliver water from the mainland. But with 170,000 people, the demand became too much, and the Venetian engineers had to get creative. From the beginning, Venetian islands were built around squares, which were initially just empty fields for animals to graze upon. The idea was to use these squares to collect rainwater. They started by digging out large areas under the entire square and lining the walls with a thick layer of clay to make it waterproof. The space was then filled in with sand and stones and the surface was redone with tiles that would lead the water towards each corner of the square. From here, rainwater would flow into the basin and gradually filter through the sand and stones until it reached the main well at the center of the square. To maximize the surface area for water collection, the roofs of the nearby buildings were fitted with gutters that would direct the water onto the square and into the drains. Venice then became an enormous funnel, which filled more than 600 wells around the city. The Venetians had once again engineered a masterpiece yeah, to genius. save its city. But there was still one genius. huge problem, waste. Until this point, people threw all of their waste out of the window, some of it landing in the canal. All of their waste, guys, keep that in, keep that in mind, all of their waste. But for That's why when I said, I don't know about, you know, walking through those, that water, that's nasty. Those who didn't live within throwing distance of a canal, 
urine, feces, and rotten food all ended up in the streets. Right. And so, in the 16th century, the Venetians started building a network of underground tunnels that would collect the waste from every building and flush it into the canal. When the tide of the lagoon was down, solid waste would collect at the bottom and the liquids would naturally flow into the canals. Then, when the tide rose, it would flood the tunnels and pull the solid waste into the canal. The motion of the tide coming in and out twice a day would exchange the dirty water for fresh water from the sea, flushing Venice from all of its waste. The extremely salty water worked as a strong disinfectant, and thanks to this system, the streets became clean. Amazingly, almost all of the incredible engineering that made Venice is still around today. The bridges, the to an extent. Canals, the buildings are all ancient relics sitting on a forest that has held up the entire city for over a thousand years. Right. And now, time for the Primal Space giveaway. Bro, well the winner played. of the previous giveaway is Leon. Congrats. In the next video, we'll be giving away this Primal Space designed Venice poster. All you need to do is sign up at the link below, like the video, and leave a comment saying what you think about Venice. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Listen, I'm a, I'm a, I like this. More of these. <laughs> Guys, this was great. Um, you know, the information that was delivered was delivered in, in a way that I think the, um, the overwhelming majority of individuals that are watching this could instantly understand it and not be confused at all by it, right? It wasn't uh, overdone. It wasn't over embellished. It was just information for the sake of, of helping someone learn about, uh, you know, the engineering of Venice if they did not specifically know about the engineering of Venice, right? This is great. This is well done. This should be shown in schools, bro. Be honest. I mean, I think this would have the ability to actually help or foster some type of, I don't know, engineering type drive into some of the young ones, guys. I think that'd be great. Seriously. Like, really seriously, guys. I like this a lot. But, guys, this is a... Venice was a genius place. It was. It was. Uh, is it still, like, the most? No, it's not, right? But, for the time, it's astronomically crazy. You guys, you guys are, I'm sure, all agree with this here. Unfortunately, in about 100 years, it's going to be gone, though. Yeah. Um, it's not going... It's going to be completely submerged underneath the water. That's just the fact. Um... It's going to be a, a sunken city. But all right, listen, guys, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy your day uh, thoroughly. Guys, before we go, are you guys subscribed to the other channels? Logical Movie Reviews with Mr. L. Boyd along with Mr. L. Boyd Music. Both are found in the description. Check it out.